So the purpose of this video is to learn how to deploy your cloud service project to Azure. Whether you have a web role, worker role, or both, the procedure is the same. There's two ways to do it, one of which is right out of Visual Studio, and the second method, which is inside Azure Portal and uploading your service configuration file as well as your cloud service package file. In order to make a storage account, you want to go to the Azure Portal and go to storage accounts on the menu. Alternatively, you can go to the search bar and type in storage account. You'll see two. One is the, the newer version, one is classic. Uh, cloud services actually use classic storage account. So you could click on it right here, but I'm gonna choose tr traditional route of clicking on the, the menu over here. So you'll see here, you just wanna go to add and you want to give a name for your storage account, we'll just call this um, sample storage account 2018. That is taken. Oh, it can only be lowercase. Okay, sample storage account 2018. It's available. We'll change the deployment model to classic and East US for location, unless of course you're from a different location, you can feel free to change it as you need. And for replication, we'll go to locally redundant. And we can choose standard, your subscription. And for resource group, let's use the existing one that we have from earlier videos, my resource group. And just click create. It's gonna take some time to get it up. Um, you have this nice little menu, or not menu, pop up here telling you that deployment is in progress and maybe give it five minutes and it should be up. So it looks like our storage account is up. We can click on it to get some more information. You'll see that there's plenty of options. We won't cover this right now. There'll probably be a separate video that actually goes over um, storage accounts in more detail. But for now, we are good to go. So the first method of deployment is through the Azure portal. So you want to navigate to Azure portal. Go to the menu or where you see the favorites and you should see Cloud Services Classic. If you don't see it already, you can go to the search bar on the top and type in Cloud Service. You see it right here on the services, just click on that. And next you want to click on Add. So you want to begin by giving a DNS name so we can actually navigate to the Cloud Service once it's been deployed. So we will give it the name of cl Sample Cloud Service 2018. Uh, have your subscription chosen. I think it already chooses the one, the default one. You can choose a, a different subscription if you have it. Uh, for resource group, we'll go to Use Existing and choose My Resource Group. This is the resource group that we made in earlier videos, so we're going to stick with this. Um, location East. Obviously, you can choose a different location other than East US. You can choose location that's closer to where you might be. Uh, otherwise, you could just leave it as East US. This next parameter package is what is vital for deploying through Azure Portal. So you want to click on this. For deployment label, we'll just type first deployment for now. And a deployment label is essentially a nice way to name your deployment or your build version. Um, for package and configuration location, we'll keep it from local. We're not using a blob storage to extract it. For storage account, just make sure you have your storage account or the storage account that you want related to this um, resource group. So next is the meat and potatoes of this actual deployment, which is looking for the configuration package and conf uh, configuration file. So in order to generate your cloud service package as well as your cloud service configuration file. All you have to do is go back to Visual Studio, right click on your cloud service project and find this little option package. So it'll give you the option to choose which configuration file you wanna use as well as the build configuration. In this case, we are going to keep it as the defaults of cloud and release and just click on package. It'll do its thing down here. You can see the status of its job. And when it's done, it should open up the folder. Yep, there you go. And here you have it. You have your, your package and your configuration file. So just make sure to take note of the path that you're given here. B 
because when you go back to the portal, you're going to have to navigate to this path and find these files to upload. So now that we've generated the package files and the configuration files that we need, we just need to go back and click on this folder icon. Make sure you've gone to the proper path and just click on it and click open. Same for configuration file. Now for the environment, we're just playing around, so it doesn't really matter whether you choose production or staging, but it's probably just good practice to choose staging anyways, since you don't want to actually deploy anything to production, right? If you're on the job, that is. So once you're done with that, you can just have start deployment checked and click OK. And then uh, you don't need any certificates as of right now for this tutorial, so we'll just click Create. And it should be generating this cloud service. So it does take some time for it to be generated. Um, you can always click on this notification icon to see the status of it. And until then, it's just playing the waiting game. So it looks like the deployment failed. and. Azure was kind enough to let us know why. It says the uploaded configuration file has at least one role that is only one instance. You should deploy at least two instances per role to ensure high availability in case one of the instances become unavailable. If you want to use the current blah, 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 actually, I shouldn't say that. This is very important. <laughs> if you want to use the current configuration, retry the operation and click deploy even if one or more roles contain a single instance in the dialog box. So before I continue, I just want to show you what they're talking about. Uh, what they're talking about is right here inside the cloud service configuration. You actually see that you have the name of the web role and the instance count as one. So if you were to change this to two, problem solved, you have two instances. Um, however, we just want to stay with one instance. There's no reason to have two for this example. So alternatively, uh, this is actually a good opportunity since we have this mistake we have a chance to learn from it if you want to do uh, so we already covered how to do a deployment when you're creating the cloud service for the first time so if you want to if the cloud service already exists and you want to do deployments through the portal you can do so by doing going to the portal going to upload and we'll call this second deployment right and uh, we'll change this to storage account that we want and we'll just upload those files again the package and cloud configuration and check this deploy even if one or more roles contain a single instance which is what they were complaining about in the first place so now it says creating deployment and I don't think there should be any issues if we were to refresh this in about a few seconds and minutes um, the status over here should be changed to uh, you know, deploying, transitioning, whatever. There you go. So it's going to take some time. So we're not going to finish the whole duration to see it at running status. I'll just fast forward to when it is at running stat, uh, status. So it's been a few minutes. We come back and we see that the status has changed from deploying to running. And we also see that down here below, we see that the web role instance has been created. It has its own status of starting. And we see a few boxes here that give us some basic metrics. So as stated earlier, the second method for deployment is inside Visual Studio. To do that, you want to go to your cloud service. You want to right click on it, and you'll see an option to publish. You want to click on that. Not sure why it starts on this first. It should start on sign-in. So here you want to make sure you have your proper credentials over here and um, your proper subscription set up. And then you can click on Next. For settings, let's just make sure we have the proper cloud service in mind. And just like when we're generating the package files, it lets you choose the environment and build configuration. And this is all fine, except for this. We want to change it to staging. Release build configuration is fine. Service configuration is cloud. And just in case you're wondering, they're referencing this file over here where it says service configuration.cloud.csfg. Well, that's a mouthful. 
you can go to advanced setting as well, so we can change the deployment label. So if you go to the portal currently after we've made the initial deployment, let's see here. Let's see if the status has changed for this. It's in running state, fantastic. But you'll see that the deployment label is second deployment, right? So inside Visual Studio, we're going to say that from the Visual Studio deployment, we're going to say that the deployment label will be Sample Cloud Service Proj. And it uh, looks like we have everything set up here. So you want to go to Next. We're going to choose to not do Application Insights. We can cover that later. And just a nice little base summary. So we don't have Remote Desktop enabled. That's fine. And everything else looks fine. So we can just hit Publish. And if you hit Publish, and you expand the output, you'll see that it'll give you the information that you need about its status for its deployment. So, okay, so we're being prompted that it's going to replace the pre-existing deployment. That is fine. Replace it. And let's just expand this and check the history. Whoa, I just realized there's an accident. This is saying storage account, classic storage. So we want to stop this, cancel and remove. Yes, we want to stop that deployment. Let's do that one more time. Let's see where we went wrong. Ah, yes. So storage account should be sample storage account, not that other one. Hit next, next, and publish. Yes, we want to replace it. And now we can comfortably watch the deployment and its log. So I actually stopped the recording because it was taking seven to eight minutes for the deployment to complete. So just in case it's helpful, here is the completed log that you get after deploying to Visual Studio. And as you can see, it's very short. There's no reason to have this for seven to eight minutes. So there's another thing that I noticed um, earlier when I was deploying through the portal and I had the failed message and I did a redeployment. I must have forgot to choose the environment of staging. However, this works out great because now we have the portal deployment in production with second deployment. And if you go to staging, which is the settings that we set for the Visual Studio deployment, we sure enough have the deployment label that we're looking for, you know, the name and the uh, date timestamp. And last but not least, let us go to production and uh, we'll click on the site URL and see if it's coming up as intended. We didn't do any modifications to the default MVC application so we should just see the same exact thing but deployed into the cloud. It might take a while as does everything with Azure it seems. And sure enough, here we have it. This is the default page. This is our cloud service. So we've completed the deployment. We successfully deployed our application. So in conclusion, we learned how to deploy your cloud service project in two ways. The first being through the portal, loading up your cloud service configuration and package files. And the second being through Visual Studio and using the publish feature. However, there's actually a third way to deploy to Azure, which is using PowerShell scripts 
This is important when it comes to automation. But we'll cover that in a later video. We also learned how to create a storage account and the purpose of a storage account in relation to deployments. So I hope you learned something from watching this video and stick around because there will be plenty more Azure content coming up. Thanks for watching. Take care.